I just want to link up maybe to two of the presentations we just heard, those of Nida and Sabahuddin, uh, and the question of Europe uh, and whether Europe represents a hope. I got from your presentation, Sabahuddin, the sense that progress has been made, but there's still uh, a rich reservoir of mistrust um, and resentment uh, on, on all sides that needs to be overcome. And I'm wondering the degree, the degree to which you see Europe as an answer in the long term, this embedding of Bosnia and Herzegovina into a deeper set of transnational institutions and the various human rights norms that Nida mentioned as part of this process of reconciliation alongside the interreligious dialogue. So that's a question for you and then maybe Nida, you can um, give us an update on what is holding back those negotiations for EU accession. Is it about economics or is it about some of these human rights issues that we've been discussing? So, okay. Please. As the, <clears throat> as the perspective or the, the situation, the current situation, uh, it is very hard to give a simple answer. Uh, and in many times there are different perspectives or views or how even the issues should be dealt. Uh, the religion existed in, a, in a Europe for a long time and it's a part of any society. Uh, as was mentioned, the, the secular part of the Europe also has the views on how the whole system and everything should be, should be working. Uh, in specifically in Bosnia, we have one issue that maybe it is not mentioned throughout these, these presentation, and that is the issue of the Bosniaks or the Muslims. As Bosniaks or Bo Bosniak identity, it exists of three aspects, of three segments, and one is the religious, spiritual, one is the national, and one is through the government or through the country. As uh, Bosniaks, we don't have that national identity presented. Uh, we are being seen as people, not as a nation. And in many instances, that does not give that right for the place or the country where to live. And I believe in the Bosnia and Herzegovina specific case, why I believe it, it will be uh, an example for the whole Europe mm -hmm. based on the solving the conditions and the situations in the Bosnia and Herzegovina and the region, it will be an example for the whole Europe how to coexist. The Germany, after World War II, they faced their actions and after the realization of their own actions, they were able to continue and try to work of being part of the Europe, our European Union. As long as we in Bosnia and Herzegovina are pushing or not willing to face what has been done and take the consequences or take the responsibility of all those actions, I don't believe that efforts in reconciliation will be going to the proper direction. As I said, if we don't get to the point that we can say actually sorry, if we don't get to the point that uh, we can sit and discuss and see how the future should be the best with recognition of the past and realization, but not as a way of retribution, but as a way of teaching us how to continue forward in living together and not to come to the position to, to have the history that we had in the past. Uh, in that effort, there is also international perspective. Um, I believe, and this is my personal belief, as, as a person, even the situation in the Bosnia and Herzegovina, it's also dealt on an international level. There are inter international stakes that has to be maintained and taken care of. And in that perspective, again, the Bosnia and Herzegovina pays the price of solving and satisfying the whole general conditions in the Europe how and when in regards to the economic crisis in regards to the, the crisis that they are happening throughout the world and not just to Europe. But I believe that uh, 
the worst crisis that we can have is moral crisis. And if we come, overcome our moral crisis, then we will be able to face all the other crises that exist. And we will have a better hope for the future and living together in Europe with prosperity for all the countries and all European Union. Thank you. Nida, from your perspective? Yeah. What's holding Bosnia back? Um, mm. uh, I guess I, yeah, I, I would react to what you said. I mean, the, there, there, of course, is um, justice is important. Justice is important, you know, to the international community, even if you know, the EU is talking about tax codes and Supreme Courts and agricultural ministries. This is about creating a justice uh, in a way that, uh, in the sense that justice can be served not only by the ICGY, not only by courts functioning, but also by the fact that you can build a future. There is a justice in the sense that Muslims in Bosnia can, can create a life and, and continue living with uh, Croats and Serbs as they had for centuries. There's a justice in that. And I think what the EU is, is trying to do, and the US is, is trying to cooperate in that uh, regard, is to help uh, sort out, you know, cr set up a, a series of building blocks to get to that step. They're, uh, they're very small steps. They're not sort of justice writ large, but they're, they're tiny steps in the direction in which you can start to rebuild the society. Um, the, what I think um, a, a big holdup in Bosnia is today is that um, Bosnian leaders are, uh, are stuck in the, the Dayton Constitution. They're stuck in uh, the, the Dayton Accords, which of course was effective in, in ending the conflict. Um, but the people who wrote the, helped write the Constitution, the people who helped forge the Dayton Accords knew that this was only the one beginning step. Uh, and that's why I sort of I link the the euro crisis. Uh, it's it's a very similar story. The the eurozone was created in the hope that eventually they would build a banking structure that would unify all of them. And oops, they forgot to do that over the last decade. And now there's a bigger crisis. And Bosnia is facing a similar thing. You have to take those little baby steps, even though they don't. You know that that's not going to solve. That's not going to resolve uh, the horrors that were faced by by Bosnian women during the war, you know, but this is, this is sort of a step in that direction. So I guess um, when I talk about civil society, I hope that, uh, that civil society will help uh, convince their leaders, the leaders that they elect, to, to move forward. To, I think there's a certain comfort that those elected leaders feel in the institutions that, that the Dayton Constitution has built and why there's, there's very little incentive for them to sort of move forward. So I would hope that religious groups, women's groups, all the civil society groups would sort of push them along. They're, the power should be there uh, with, with the electorate um, to, to make sure that uh, political leaders are actually serving the interests of the people and not just serving themselves, which, which I think the international community has been very deeply criti critical of. Um, and I think that uh, a way forward also is to sort of look at international human rights norms. Uh, the, the Venice Commission has criticized the, the International um, uh, Human Rights Court has, has, uh, has judged that the, the uh, Dayton Constitution does not follow human rights norms. And that's sort of the first step um, in the direction of creating an open, democratic, uh, human rights abiding uh, legal culture that will help um, Bosnia take another step towards uh, towards becoming uh, an EU member state, and that's that's really going to be essential. Um, and keeping keeping the the political parties, uh, you know, truthful about what they're doing. I think they're you know probably better than I do the big controversy there over the summer is they were uh, the elected leaders were sort of figuring out a way to um, ensure that. Uh, all people had a right to participate in, in, uh, in elected office and not just specific groups. It's, it was clearly discriminatory that neither Jews nor, uh, uh, nor mixed uh, uh, people were able to participate in, in, in uh, being elected to political office. And I think the leaders uh, and political parties were involved in trying to you know, renegotiate actually the same deal that they had before, but with a different title, with a different sort of face. Um, so I think this is the role for civil society, for everybody to sort of participate and keep everybody honest, you know, keep, mm -hmm. the, keep the politicians honest. Um, and and, and the, I think the international norms, the human rights norms, the EU steps towards the EU enlargement help direct all of us um, towards the same goal. Thank you.